Good evening everybody. Do you remember this bin? This is the experimental worm bin I set up which just had tea bags only. And the, and the reason this was set up was because I had a large bin which was about three quarter full of just tea bags in which um, the worms were working away but they didn't seem to be thriving really. And it just made me curious if there was something about just tea bags only that uh, created an environment in which the worms failed to, um, you know, develop and, and thrive. It didn't seem to be working as good as the other bins, although there were, were plenty of worms in it. Now, the seven of us in our house, and we get through an awful lot of tea every day and a lot of tea bags. So that's how the original bin got set up. There's a little canister beside the kettle and the tea bags get thrown in there and I would just throw it into a bin with worms. Um, but when I looked at the bin to harvest it, I'll put a link at the end of this video to the original bin. Um, the worms didn't seem to be doing all that well, so that prompted me to set up this little experiment. So this should have been uh, done a lot earlier, and it was thanks to a prompt by Adrian, really, that I remembered this bin. Sorry, real life does have a way of getting in the way of these little experiments. So this is delayed. It's um, about one, it's 23 weeks on. Um, so this bin has been working for almost four month, uh, six months. So what I've done now is I've just um, taken all the stuff out and I'm going to sift the worms out of the um, vermicompost and see how they're getting on. When I had a look at it, does it, it, it was set up with about an inch or two of the partially composted guinea pig bedding, a handful of vermicompost and 30 worms. So I counted them out. They were a mixture of young worms, juveniles and adults. So we'll see how many worms we actually have now, five months, almost six months on. The pH of the bedding was seven, so that pH is just fine for worms, it's completely neutral. So the the bedding itself, the pH of the bedding I should say, um, wouldn't have ever been an issue for the worms. And that's the worms separated out now. I counted 316 worms. So in a little short of six months, we went from 30 to 316, so that's a, a ten and a half times increase in the population. Now, ideally, I'd have been looking for something closer to about 600 worms, actually. So, but it's still not bad. It means they have been reproducing in the bin. But here's the thing. If you take a look at the worms, um, there's quite a few that are not adult yet. <clears throat> now, in almost six months, I would have expected to find a lot more adult worms in these uh, 316 than I found. There's a lot of very young worms, baby worms, juveniles. And when I say baby worms and juveniles, I mean worms that don't have a saddle. Or a clitellum, so they're not adults. They're not able to reproduce, and that, to me, would seem to suggest there was quite a bit of die-off in the bin. So the worms are reproducing; they're laying cocoons, and then they seem to be dying off much quicker than they do in the other bins. And looking at them, they're very lethargic. They're very thin. Um, they're a bit lifeless, really. So, again, it's the same sort of thing as I saw in the original tea bag only worm bin. Is that there were worms, they were working away, uh, but they weren't thriving. They didn't look healthy, they didn't look happy. Um, they had that look on their face that they would rather be somewhere else, you know what I mean? Another factor to bear in mind is that this bin was set up um, towards late October, so it has been working away through the winter. And we know that the winter will slow things down in worm bins, but particularly the ones that are outside and are not temperature controlled, if you like. So my bins are at the mercy of the weather. They're under cover, but they're completely exposed otherwise. So when it's very cold, the bins get cold and the worms get cold. So that would have had an impact on their work rate and their reproduction rate. But even so, one of the, the I mean, the key thing for me is is the number of 
worms that are not adults. So those would have hatched from the cocoons and been growing, say in the last four to eight weeks or so. Which means a lot of worms prior to that died off. Now, looking at them now, they're actually starting to liven up. And it's almost as if they're relieved I've taken them out of that bin. And I think they deserve the melon. So I'm going to set these guys up in a new bin. Um, with normal bedding. A mixture of um, all sorts of carbon-based material. And I think if any group of worms deserve a melon, it's these guys. Thanks for watching.